10.2 is titled Congruent Triangles. So today we'll be looking at um, similarities between triangles, how to identify um, if you know one part of a triangle, finding the other part. So two definitions to start. First definition is the word congruent. And this means that the figures have the same size and the same shape. So again, congruent means same size and same shape. We will be looking at um, lots of congruent triangles today and trying to figure out uh, which parts correspond um, from one triangle to the other. So corresponding parts are the parts of congruent shapes, and, and in this lesson particularly triangles, parts of the congruent triangles that match. And so the next uh, slide is all devoted to how to tell corresponding parts of triangles. So you do need to copy all of this down. Pay really close attention to the notations um, in the model section of this slide. Make sure that you write, um, draw in those little tick marks, just kind of how they've been drawn in, in the picture. But corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So if two triangles are congruent, their corresponding sides are congruent, and their corresponding angles are congruent. Remember, congruent, um, in, the, in our case, we'll be talking about things being equal. So the first statement that's made down here is the congruent statement for the triangle. This statement down here reads that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And what we'll want to pay really close attention to is the order of the letters in this statement because the order of the letters in this statement will tell us everything about the two triangles. Again, this is not um, back to what we talked about with proportions. This is actual congruence, so same size, same shape. So if the letter A is written first and if the letter D is written first, as they are here, that means that those two angles are congruent. And you'll see up in the picture that angle A has one little arc mark, and angle D also has one arc mark. So that means that A and D are congruent, and you can see that listed here. Angle A is congruent to angle D. This symbol, this equal symbol with the little squiggly line on top, that's the symbol for congruence. That same pattern will follow since letter B is written second and letter E is written second then that means that those two angles are congruent. So B is congruent to E, and in this triangle, these triangles, they happen to be right triangles, so instead of being marked uh, with an arc symbol, we use the box to indicate a 90 degree angle. They're both 90 degrees, so that means that they're congruent. Finally, the third letter in the congruence statement was C and F, so that means that angle C is congruent to angle F. You can see that here. And they are also noted by these little tick marks, they call them, or arc marks um, for angles. There are two of them for C and there are two of them for F. So that means that those are the two angles that are congruent. Since we're talking about triangles, we talked about their angles being congruent, their sides are also congruent. And again, the way that the letters are written in this congruence statement right under the triangles helps determine the order that you list these letters in. It is important. So A and B are written first. That means that side AB is congruent to side, look what two letters are listed first, DE. So you can see that AB is congruent to, to DE. And you'll also notice that they each have the single tick mark. That indicates that they are congruent to one another. Then it follows. B and C are the second and third letter listed. E and F are also the second and third letter listed. So BC is congruent to EF. And notice we even say them in that same order. BC and EF instead of saying BC and FE. We want to make sure we keep everything in the same order. Finally, CA. Notice we go last letter, first letter, which means it should be congruent to FD, also the last letter and then the first letter you'll see that BC and EF had the two tick marks, which means those are two, those are congruent to one another, and CA and FD have the three tick marks, so those are congruent. So there will be uh, problems in your homework where you're asked to 
you're, you're told that the triangles are congruent, so you're asked to make the congruence statement. This is the congruence statement right here. And then after that, you're asked to list all of the congruent angle pairs and all of the congruent side pairs. So you'll want to make sure you're following exactly how it was done here, keeping everything in order. So let's name the corresponding parts in the congruent triangles and then complete the congruence statement. So it doesn't matter what letter you start with. Um, oftentimes triangles are listed in an alphabetical order. So we're going to do angles and we're going to do sides. So for the angles, I'm just going to start with J. J has one arc mark. So I'm looking over here in the picture for the angle that also has one arc mark and that is M. So angle J is congruent to angle M. Then I'm going to go around to K. Angle K is congruent. It has the two arc marks, so that's angle N. Finally, three arc marks for L and P, so angle L is congruent to angle P. Now, I could go ahead and go up and do the congruent statement right now. I could go ahead and list because um, I could get them in the right order. I know that J is congruent with M, K is congruent with N, and L is congruent with P. Since it goes J, K, L, it has to go M, N, P. So then I would say congruent to triangle M, N, P. We also need to list the sides, though, and the sides are listed. Remember, you have to be really careful about the order here, the letters that you use. Start wherever you want, though. You can start at the one tick mark. You can start at two. You can start at three. You can start with JK. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and start over here with the one that has one tick mark. And if I go from K to L, we're also going to look at the angle measures. So there were two tick marks and three tick marks. So I want to go N to P, not P to N. So we're going to say side KL is congruent to side NP. And you can verify up here. Notice that K and L were the second and third letters. N and P are also the second and third letters. So I have named that correctly. Now I'm just going to work my way around the triangle. I'm going to do LJ next. That's the last letter listed in the triangle name and the first letter. So that would be P with M. Finally, we have JK. That's first and second letter, so JK, side JK is congruent to JK. We're going to go MN in that order. Now, if initially you had switched this up and said KJ, then on this side you would have had to switch it up and say NM. So here we have listed all the corresponding parts and we have written the congruence statement. Now let's do one without a picture. So triangle ABC is congruent to HFG. Name the corresponding parts and complete the congruent statement. Now what you're going to notice about the congruent statement is the orders of the letters have been switched around a little bit. So we need to, to take that into consideration when we write the next part. We can use this up here. So B was the second letter listed originally. F is the second letter listed originally. So that means that the first letter I'm going to put here is going to be an F because B went first. Then it was A, which corresponds with H, and finally C corresponds with G. So the congruent statement triangle BAC is congruent to triangle FHG. So we're going to list angles that are congruent. So angle B is congruent to angle F. Angle A is congruent to angle H. And finally, angle C is congruent to angle G. When we list the sides, we want to make sure that we're following the same letter order. So if I start with BA, then I want to say FH. Again, first, second, first, second. So side BA is congruent to side FH. Side AC is congruent to HG. Again, following that second, third, second, third. And then CB is congruent to GF. So we've named all the corresponding parts, angles and sides, and written a congruence statement.
Now we need to determine whether the triangles are congruent. And this will be looking at the different sides. You can see we've got one kind of flipped around. You have to try to imagine either rotating one of these triangles back around the other way or just making some, uh, verifying some things. So in order for triangles to be congruent, all three angles and all three sides have to be congruent. So let's start with the angles. We have G congruent to P, we have H with Q, and we have F with R. So if we say triangle, whoops, let me start with G. G, H, F is congruent to triangle. Now match up the tick marks, the arc marks, P, Q, R. Now this will make it a little bit easier to look at the sides. So is GH congruent to PQ? GH is 9.5 centimeters. PQ is also 9.5 centimeters. So that works. HF with QR. HF is 6 centimeters. QR is also 6. And then finally, FG is 8 centimeters, and RP is also 8 centimeters. So yes, the triangles are congruent. And we have verified with angle measures and lengths of sides. Again, determining whether they are congruent, you can see... Uh, we're missing an angle measure here that might be congruent to one of these two. So how does that play a role? Well, if H and I are congruent to K and L, you might remember that angle measures in the triangle add up to 180. So the angles of a triangle add up to 180. So if two angles are the same, like H and I, congruent to K and L, then angle G and angle J are going to be congruent because there's only one other number that J can be, whatever 180 degrees minus K and L is. Now let's look at the sides. And here you'll see now we're not the same anymore. H and G, the one tick mark to the two tick mark is three inches. That's K to J, it's four inches. So no sides are not equal. So triangles are not congruent. And I'm doing some serious abbreviating here. Sides are not equal, so triangles are not congruent. And also you'll see that the other two sides don't match up. 8 was 6, and then the 11, and the 14. In class, um, you will work on worksheet 10-2.